Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, fresh off vacation and battling a bit of strep, so if I sound a bit weird, that is why. Uh, but I got some pretty cool news coming out of the Vulcan camp. This is from the Kronos Group, the people behind OpenGL, etc. Well, basically, uh, Vulcan is the next-gen, closer-to-the-metal version of this 3D framework. For most game developers, it actually doesn't really matter that much, because you use a game engine, and your game engine, in turn, uses something like Vulcan. Uh, but you see, historically, um, we kind of used more of a high-level framework. We had things like DirectX 11, OpenGL, etc. That kind of, you said, you know, draw this triangle or that. And then we move kind of lower levels so that instead said, run this script. And then over time, we kind of come lower and lower and lower level. Notice a lot of overhead in the drivers, making drivers very complicated, very bloated. Whereas in the meantime, the hardware behind it, uh, modern day GPUs actually started getting a lot simpler in some ways, but massively parallel. So basically they became very, very good at doing simple things, but thousands and thousands of them at the same time. And the graphics API world, your um, DirectX, your, um, well, ultimately became Vulkan or OpenGL, um, and then Apple's Metal, all kind of stepped in to like offer a new lower level, easier to develop driver, harder to use for the programmer level interface. And that is ultimately what became Vulkan. AMD started something called Mantle. Mantle was open sourced, given over to the Kronos Group, and is Vulkan. Now, Vulkan has had one major limitation, and that is it is not available on iOS or Mac platforms. The problem is, Apple went about solving this themselves. They also created their own low-level API they called Metal. And Microsoft also did this on um, Xbox One, for example. There is DirectX 12, which again is a close to the hardware uh, graphics API. Now, why do we like these? Well, first off, they give a lot more flexibility to the graphics programmer. If you're a good programmer working at that level, you can squeeze so much performance out of this. They're also easier to develop drivers for, so we get a lot less issues as a result. But with Apple implementing their own solution in the form of Metal, once the world kind of standardized behind Vulkan, and Vulkan is probably the most available, available on Android, available on Windows, available on um, most consoles out there, just not available on those Mac products, which is a problem. Well, you'll notice on this graphic, we have another guy up here called Molten VK. Well, Molten VK was open sourced, and is now available. What Molten VK is basically a translation layer between Vulkan and Metal. So essentially, it allows you to run your Vulkan powered games on Mac hardware. So uh, the newer versions of iOS and Mac OS have Vulkan support. You can now run your, sorry, have Metal support. You can now run Vulkan apps on them uh, without any change from your end. So basically, you can use Vulkan to do. Um, it's basically the one API to target as many platforms as possible. And the same group is also working on a direct X12 backend. So you'll also be able to get things like, you know, Xbox One support, etc. Now, Vulkan is supported um, on Windows platform. It's more for UWP or Xbox One that that will ultimately become a thing. So the cool thing is basically the Kronos group, Valve, as in Steam, Valve, and um, this other company whose name is for kind of leaving me, they were a really small group, uh, Brenwell Workshop, which kind of small tidbit of trivia, apparently are from Erin, Ontario, which is just down the road from Toronto where I live, and it is like population 8,000 township. So it's kind of funny, but anyways, uh, those three got together. They're working on basically bringing Vulcan to as many platforms as possible. Uh, cool thing in this announcement is this product, basically, um, oh, what did I call it? Uh, Molten VK is now completely open source Apache 2 license. So you can actually, here it is. Uh, it used to be commercial, and now the nice thing is, it's on GitHub. Uh, so you can use it, on Apache 2 license basically brings um, Vulkan support to a number of different platforms. So we have uh, iOS and Mac being added, and kind of, that's about it. Like I said, they've got other products in work in terms of DirectX 12 backend, but it's making Vulkan a much more um, desirable API. Now, again, to the majority of developers, you don't work at the Vulkan level. Um, you don't create your own renderer. You're probably using a game engine. And if you're using uh, Unreal or Unity, for example, you probably ultimately don't care because they have the resources to throw into creating a renderer backend for Metal, for uh, Vulkan, for you know DirectX 11, for DirectX 9, OpenGL 3, OpenGL ES, which is the mobile version, etc. 
But the more of these backend renderers you have, the more complexity it adds, the more problems you could potentially have. It's just kind of a headache, especially for the people maintaining the game engines. Whereas if you can get one graphics layer that just works across as many platforms as possible, it really helps out the people actually maintaining the game engines. And this isn't just a small announcement. This actually happened, I think, two days ago formally. And just today, basically, the Godot team came out straight out and said, yep, we're going to be using Vulkan now. So this is a pretty major development because what it allows them to do is hit as many of those targets as possible using one a maintainable backend renderer. So now um, what they were looking at using was OpenGL ES, which ES is a embedded systems. It's a subset of OpenGL 4. Point whatever. So the naming and numbering conventions in the OpenGL world are getting very confusing. But they were using the um, embedded subset of 3.0 of OpenGL. And if you read this article, I'll link this down below. Um, point blank, OpenGL ES is having some birthing pains. It's not available on all platforms. There are problems there. There are buggy driver implementations. There's uh, slow support from certain devices, etc. OpenGL ES 3 isn't really as much of a, a winner as people had hoped. So basically, they're stuck using OpenGL ES 2. Now, the back end is staying in there. They're going to be working and putting their assets towards making Vulkan the primary. Three is going to be deprecated. Two is still in there. Uh, and then you get into WebGL and other stuff like that. Beyond the scope of what I'm going to talk about today. But this is just to show you this announcement, this ability for Vulkan to you know, hit the, probably the two biggest plot. Well, sorry, macOS, you're not that significant. But iOS, that's a huge market to be missing out on. So now this is a great thing for certain game engines such as Godot to now be able to hit all of those targets with no real additional work on their behalf. So that's why this is a big deal. Um, again, to most of you guys, end of the day, you're not going to really see a huge difference. In a lot of cases, Vulkan apparently is running uh, faster. Uh, if you go back to the original quote, they're actually saying uh, they have Vulkan running Dota 2 on Mac OS with a fairly significant increase uh, significantly higher performance than the native OpenGL driver. So there is a performance gain potentially from it, but mostly that comes down to implementation. Now, again, a long run view, these closer to the metal APIs are easier to write drivers for. And drivers are basically the source of so many of the bugs, performance slowdowns, and everything else in the world today, and probably the biggest headache for game engine developers out there. So if you take that complexity away, we all win. So we should see faster games, more frame rates, et cetera, from uh, Vulkan being the standard on the back end. But again, other than that, to the end user, this isn't going to make a huge difference. Like, So if you're a Godot developer today, for example, they switch to Vulkan, it means absolutely nothing as of tomorrow. Other than, you know, again, you might see some performance uh, gained here, losses there, etc. But for the most part, it doesn't change your world. There's no uh, change in scripting. Uh, you, you still do your graphics programming the same way, etc. It's mostly for the people implementing the game engine that makes this such a huge deal. All right, that's it for now. Um, so kind of a really cool development. Nice to see Kernel Group moving forward to the, this. Uh, cool work on... Um, Molten VK. It looks like a really cool project. Once again, uh, it is available on GitHub if you do want to check it out. Um, yeah, that's what it for now. Hope you enjoyed that. I will see you all later. Goodbye.